You may have seen some of those mind-blowing video demonstrations of teachers spinning a wheel like a bicycle tire and watch in awe as they make them do some pretty unnatural things. Things such as making them spin in an unexpected direction or even balancing the axle on a string and seemingly defying gravity. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly why that happens and it's actually a lot simpler than you think. So let's get into it. The phenomenon we're talking about here is called gyroscopic precession. Gyroscopes and precession are everywhere. We see it in our day-to-day -day technology, we see it in our devices, medicine, even the rotation of the earth is subject to precession. Put simply, a gyroscope is a spinning object like a wheel or a propeller, and gyroscopes have two special properties. They are rigidity and precession. Rigidity, or rigidity in space, refers to a spinning object's tendency to want to maintain the axis on which it's spinning. The faster the spin, the higher the rigidity in space. If a wheel isn't spinning, it'll just fall over, but when it's spinning, it wants to stay spinning on that axis. This is why rigidity in space is also known as gyroscopic inertia. Now what about precession? Well, there's a bit more to it, but by the end of this video, the concept should be pretty concrete. Consider this video here. A wheel is spinning on its axle, while at the same time being suspended on a piece of string. This seems impossible and we wonder why it doesn't just fall down. To understand this, it's just a simple case of knowing where the vectors are and how they behave, and I'm going to show you how. We'll come back to this example at the end of the video, but first, let's start with the basics. Consider a hockey puck sliding along on a sheet of ice. As it slides freely, it has momentum, which we denote with the letter P. Now, if a force is applied to that puck, such as getting bumped by a hockey stick or another puck, its momentum will change and it will have a different direction. As a result, the hockey puck will start traveling in that direction. We'll call this new momentum P prime. The momentum changed to follow the force, and that's really the essence of this video. The momentum will always follow, or chase, the force. Now what does this have to do with our spinning wheel? Well, when a wheel spins, it has momentum as well, specifically angular momentum, and we denote this with a capital L. And just like regular momentum, angular momentum will change based on a force applied to it. More accurately, it'll change based on a torque applied to it. We denote torque with this symbol here called tau. Now what's the direction of this angular momentum that we speak of? We use the right hand rule to make it easy for us to determine this, and we're going to use the right hand rule in every example throughout this video. Here's how it works. If you curl the four fingers of your right hand along the arc of the spin, your thumb should be pointing in the direction of the angular momentum. What we have here is a light blue wheel spinning on a dark blue axle. So in this example here, the spin is rotating counterclockwise as seen from the top. So by curling your fingers in that direction, you'll notice that your thumb will be pointing upward. Therefore, the angular momentum is upward. Or there's this example here where the spin is spinning clockwise as seen from the top. And when we curl our four fingers of our right hand in the direction of that arc, you'll notice that our thumb will be pointing downward. How about this example here where the wheel is upright and as you can see the wheel is spinning in a certain direction. So again, we curl our fingers in that direction and what happens is we'll notice that our thumb will be pointing to the left. Here we have the wheel on the diagonal now. Same principle, curl our fingers in the direction of that spin and you will see that our thumb will be pointing up and to the right. How about these two examples here? In both cases, we have a side view of the spinning wheel. On the top example, the wheel is spinning counterclockwise. So what we do is we curl our fingers in the direction of that counterclockwise spin. And what you'll notice is that your thumb will be pointing towards you, which is to say the angular momentum is coming towards you. The way we write this is we would write a circle with a dot in the middle. And the way to visualize this is just think of an arrow coming towards you. Not a great thought, but that's how it works. On the bottom example, we have a clockwise spinning wheel 
So again, curl your fingers in that clockwise direction, and what you'll notice is that your thumb is pointing into the screen, so that means that the angular momentum is going into the screen. The way we would write this is we would write a circle with an X in the middle, and you can think of this as an arrow going away from you. That's how you'd visualize it. So with our understanding of the right hand rule, we can now use this to solve the mysteries of gyroscopic precession. Consider this spinning wheel here. Since it's spinning, it has angular momentum. Now, in what direction is that angular momentum? Using our right hand rule, we curl our fingers in the direction of the spin, and what you'll notice is that the angular momentum points along the axis on the right. You may have noticed that in every example we've done, the angular momentum is pointed along the wheel's axis of rotation. This will be true in every case. Angular momentum will always lie along the axis of rotation. Now what if we held the wheel by the handlebars and torqued it suddenly in this direction? Well, just like angular momentum, torque has a direction as well. And just like angular momentum, we use the right hand rule to determine the direction of the torque. Torquing the wheel in such a manner will cause it to want to rotate to the side. So we simply curl the four fingers of our right hand in the direction of that rotation and our thumb will be pointing in the direction of the torque. As you can see, we now have two vectors here. So the question becomes, what would be the overall effect on the wheel? Remember how in our hockey puck example, momentum follows the force? Well, something very similar happens here. With a rotating mass, in this case a gyroscope, angular momentum follows the torque. That is, the angular momentum changes to follow the torque. The new angular momentum will point somewhere in between the original angular momentum and the torque. We'll call this new angular momentum L prime. As you can see, the wheel behaves in a seemingly unnatural way. One might think that when a wheel is torqued in a certain direction, the wheel would just rotate in that direction. But under gyroscopic conditions, that is when the wheel is spinning, it will actually tilt or precess to follow the torque vector. And that is gyroscopic precession. And that's exactly what's happening in this video right here. So to summarize what we did, we predicted which way a spinning wheel would tilt or precess by doing three things. First, we found the angular momentum using the right hand rule. Second, we found the torque also using the right hand rule. And finally, we found the new angular momentum by having the original angular momentum follow the torque. To solidify our understanding of this, let's consider another example. Let's say that the wheel is still spinning in the original direction. We grab the handles, but this time, we torque it in this direction. Which way will the wheel tilt or precess? Well, we just follow the three steps. First, we find the direction of the angular momentum using the right hand rule. We curl the four fingers of our right hand in the direction of the spin, and as you can see, your thumb will point in the direction of the angular momentum. Step two, we find the torque. So we curl our fingers in the direction we'd expect the wheel to rotate, and in doing so, our thumb should be pointing straight up along the vertical axis. And in step three, the angular momentum will follow the torque. So those handlebars will pivot so that it follows tau. As you can see, the wheel doesn't rotate with the torque, but rather it precesses upward. Okay, here's some examples for you to try on your own to see if you can determine which way the wheel will precess. If this wheel is spinning this way and you torque it this way, which way will it precess? Go ahead and pause the video if you want to take some time to figure it out. Think you got it? Okay, let's work through it. Step one, we find the angular momentum using the right hand rule. In this case, it remains the same direction as the previous example. Step two, we find the torque using the right hand rule. We curl the four fingers of our right hand in the direction of the expected rotation, and as you'll see, your thumb should be pointing downward. Step three, L follows tau. So the new angular momentum will be somewhere in between L and tau. So the wheel will precess downward. 
Here's another example. The wheel is spinning this way, and it's torqued this way. Determine which way the wheel will precess. Again, feel free to pause the video if you need to. Okay, let's see the answer. So first, step one, we find the angular momentum using the right hand rule. Step two, we find the torque, also using the right hand rule. And in step three, the angular momentum pivots to follow the torque. Okay, now let's make things interesting with this example. Here we have the wheel flat, spinning along the vertical axis. And then we torque it in this direction. Which way will the wheel precess? Alright, let's figure it out. Step 1, we find the angular momentum. Curling our fingers in the direction of the spin, our thumb should be pointing upward. Step 2, we find the torque. Curling our fingers in the direction of the expected rotation, our thumb should be pointing in this direction. Step 3, L follows tau. So in this case, it looks kind of like the wheel's trying to stand up. Alright, and one more example for good measure. The wheel is spinning this way, and then it gets torqued in this direction. Which way does it precess? Step 1. We find the angular momentum by curling the four fingers of our right hand in the direction of our spin. Your thumb should be pointing downward, so the angular momentum is downward. Step 2. We use the right hand rule again to find the torque. In this case, it's pointing in this direction. Step 3. The angular momentum follows the torque, so the wheel will tilt in this direction. By now, you're probably quite comfortable with the concept of gyroscopic precession. So now, let's go back to this video and use our understanding of gyroscopic precession to figure out how the wheel literally defies gravity. Can you figure it out? I'll leave you with this diagram here. Okay, let's work through it. Step 1. We find the angular momentum. The wheel is spinning this way, so we know from the right hand rule that the angular momentum is in this direction. Step 2. How do we find the torque? The wheel's own weight will cause it to want to rotate counterclockwise as it's being held up by the rope. Using the right hand rule, this means that the torque will be pointing out of the screen towards us. And then in step 3, the angular momentum will then follow the torque. But in this particular example, something pretty cool happens. Since there's a constant force on the wheel due to gravity, there will always be a torque. And as the angular momentum changes, so does the direction of the torque. This means the torque will continuously try to run away from the angular momentum as the angular momentum constantly chases it. And unfortunately for angular momentum, he'll never be able to catch up to torque. The overall effect? The wheel will keep rotating around and around in circles while at the same time continuing to spin on its axis. But alas, the balancing act will eventually stop as the spinning wheel slows to a halt. Depending on the context, gyroscopic precession can be a nuisance, or it can be very useful. Gyro technology has all sorts of useful applications in robotics, medicine, aviation, space exploration, smartphones. Therefore, gyroscopic precession must always be accounted for in the world of gyro technology. So there you have it. I hope this video helped you understand the fascinating concept of gyroscopic precession.